Chapter 9 Michael gave a half-hearted smile and offered his arm to yet another person of Max's and Paget's acquaintance. It was a small wedding by high society standards, but it was nice and classy. The country club had done a good job with the decor. Quiet, subtle, expensive-looking. He didn't know the exact cost, but he and Noah had given some money to the day. When Max had tried to protest, no one had explained that it was non-negotiable. Max had done much for so many, and now it was their turn to do something for him and his new bride. Seating Paget's Aunt Lucille, he made his way back to the back of the church. Noah and he were ushering people in. Some guy named Adam was waiting with Max, greeting guests. Max had said that Adam had been instrumental in introducing the couple. He was happy for Max and Paget. He smiled by rote to the next couple. The woman looked around critically. She had blonde hair, and he could see some of the resemblance to her daughter. The man looked pleasantly surprised and held out his hand, making introductions. Paget's parents. Michael nodded, kept his expression pleasant, and proceeded to usher them down the aisle. If they thought it odd that he didn't introduce himself, they didn't bother to tell him. He made sure they settled into the pre-selected seats and gave them a copy of the program. As he made his way to the back of the room, he saw Noah leading Anne and George Stapleton down the aisle to sit on the groom's side. He recognized George from the series of commercials the man made for his dentist chain. He didn't like the man on television, and he really didn't like the man in front of him now. Anne, however, looked absolutely stunning. She was a vision. It was enough to take his breath away and throw a brick in his gut. She wore a pale blue satin number with flowers on it. She was exquisite. She wasn't his. He dragged his gaze away from her. He walked out of the room and took a moment for himself outside. He watched the valet park cars and people wander into the building, greeting each other. Kristen Gaines came up to him. They shook hands. Michael, I heard what happened. Right shame. He turned to his wife. Dorothy, remember Michael? Of course, dear. She smiled at him kindly. Such a pity. He nodded his greetings, wishing they would stop acting like he was something to be pitied. He sighed. He was going to have to go back in. It wasn't like he could avoid his brother's wedding just because he'd rather not see Anne on the arm of some other man. Besides, he wasn't getting a piece out here as people came up to greet him, people he couldn't reply to. Straightening his jacket, he turned but was interrupted as his cousin Dylan came to greet him. Michael hadn't seen him for some time, but it wasn't surprised that he'd come to the wedding. Despite the age difference, before Dylan got married, he and Max had been up to a number of ventures together. Max told me, Dylan said, about the speech thing. Michael nodded. He also told me that you brought his shares so that he could start the fun for caring for the kids that were affected by Ramsley Pharma's bad drug. Dylan shook his hand. I want to thank you for that. A lot of people needed that funding. Michael shrugged. He knew that Dylan's girl Shannon had been on the drug. He wanted to ask how she was. Dylan seemed to know what he wanted to say. Soon. She'll join her mom soon. Dylan's wife had died seven years ago. He'd suffered through a lot. Avery had a sleepover and Caden had a birthday party. Shannon is resting with the nurse, so I thought I'd come down for the wedding. I don't expect to save for the reception, Dylan explained. I like to spend as much time as I can with Shannon. Michael nodded. He offered his hand to Dylan again, wishing that things had been different. He was glad, though, that Dylan had forgiven him. You need anything, you let me know, Dylan admonished him. Michael made the same hand motion back that Dylan had just made, knowing that Dylan would understand that he reciprocated the gesture. Dylan nodded, and the two of them headed back to the room that had been set up for the wedding. He helped seat the last few people. He was surprised to see his mother enter alone. He hadn't expected her to defy his father. She spotted him and smiled. He went forward to greet her with a kiss on the cheek. Noah told me. She looked tan from the cruise. She patted his cheek affectionately and blinked back tears. If you need anything, I know you can't tell me, but let me know. He nodded. She took his arm. Of course, your father wouldn't come. He's still not able to forgive Maxwell. I, however, was not going to miss this. 
he slowly escorted her to the front. She was seventy-five years young now, and while she had kept herself up very well, Michael could see a frailty starting to set in. He laid a hand over hers and assisted her to sit, giving her a program. Then it was time. The bridesmaids were lovely, the bride beautiful. Max was obviously the happiest man in the room. Vows were made, rings were exchanged. All the while, Michael tried not to look at Anne. If he could have married anyone, it would have been her. He supposed he'd stay a bachelor forever. He was surprised that she had come to the wedding. He knew Max had invited her, but to go and see him be wed when she was in love with him? Unless Michael had misunderstood. Michael supposed he could have. Then who was she in love with? It wasn't him, that was for certain. Michael waited his turn, then escorted Tiffany, Paget's sister, down the aisle. He didn't much like her. She was beautiful, yet she was also critical and vain. He suffered her in silence as he escorted her to the lawn. Pictures would be taken while the guests were entertained with cocktails. Then the reception would take place. Michael wished today was over already. He was happy for the couple. He wished them all the best. But he just felt a little off. It seemed like pictures took forever. Finally, they ended and the group headed inside. There was dinner, speeches, cake cutting. Michael watched it all, feeling a little more of an observer than a participant. He wondered if he should take some pain medication, but he didn't really feel like he had a headache. He ignored his head and watched the dancing until Elle made him go on the floor with her. She chatted amicably about how nervous Paget was before the ceremony and how she'd felt at her own wedding to Noah. He nodded at appropriate moments. She seemed very happy. She also looked very nice for as a bridesmaid. At the end of the song, he returned her to Noah. He didn't feel dizzy exactly, just not right. Paget commandeered him next. He treated her with all the due respect of the bride that she was, and listened to her happy burbling about the wedding, how she loved his brother Max, her thanks of him being a groomsman, how she adored their mother. Instinctively, he knew his mother would adore Paget as well. He was glad. It was too bad about his father. Well, it was David's loss, not the other way around. Unfortunately, after their dance, Paget paired him with Tiffany. Fortunately, Tiffany didn't seem to want to speak. That was good. He didn't want to speak either. At least, that was what he told himself. It was easier pretending he had any control in the matter. Then there was Dix. She was Paget's maid of honor. Once again, he listened as a woman complimented the bride, the venue, his brother the meal, and whatever else she could think of. After, he gently danced with his mother. She told him how much she adored Paget, and he had to smile at that. Then, using a mother's intuition, she asked him what was wrong, and he shook his head, suddenly tired. He gave her another smile and escorted her back to Max. Max would make her forget that she'd seen him unhappy in any way. Max was great at charming and distracting people. When Michael turned around, there was Anne. She gave him a shy smile. Care to dance? He swallowed and held out a hand. He couldn't refuse her. Michael didn't want to. He escorted her to the dance floor, and she put her hand on his shoulder and her left hand in his. He noticed the ring. It was huge. He felt like someone had hit him in the abdomen with a baseball bat. No, the entire world had tilted like a bomb had gone off. She was engaged. He ran a thumb over it. Yes, uh, George asked me a couple weeks ago. She smiled, but it didn't reach her eyes. What could he say? He wanted to know why she would be with a man who didn't make her happy. Then again, she said Michael didn't make her happy. So what right had he to judge? Instead, he just held her close and they danced to the music, not speaking any further. This felt like the final goodbye. Michael was grateful. He was grateful for all the years he had known her. He was grateful for the time he had with her. He hoped she would find her happiness somehow. He tried to memorize the moment. Then the music ended all too soon, and he released her. George was waiting impatiently. They were introduced, and Michael nodded to the other man's greetings. George possessively threaded Anne's arm through his. 
Michael disliked him greatly, and excused himself as soon as he could. If he was abrupt, it was because he couldn't stand to stay there any longer and pretend to be happy for Anne. Wanting to escape, he headed to the terrace. He breathed in the cool night air and looked over the impressive landscaping. He wanted to be home where he could lay in the chair with FedEx and ignore that the world had turned itself upside down. His feelings felt raw, like they'd gone ten rounds with a heavyweight champion and come out the loser. Anne was engaged. Anne married to that odious man. Anne having little Stapleton children. He felt like cursing a blue streak, throwing something. Instead, Michael stood and concentrated on breathing. Michael? L. had come out, probably to check on him. He wished she wouldn't. He didn't feel good. He wanted to be left alone. Michael, are you okay? Anne asked, laying a hand on his arm, obviously concerned. No, he wasn't okay. Then, suddenly, his body stiffened. He turned toward the right, his eyes rolling up in his head as he fell, convulsing to the ground. Anne felt bereft. She danced with Michael one last time. It had been a final goodbye, and she had savored every moment of her time with him. The rock on her left hand felt heavy, a burden. George insisted on dancing with her afterward, and so she let him lead her out on the floor. She had the feeling George was jealous of Michael, which was ridiculous. He was the one she was engaged to. Plus, he had been the one who had insisted on going to the wedding. Against her will, she watched Michael leave through the doors to the terrace. Elle followed, so she knew he was being looked after. She gave George a smile, but really didn't want to talk. George, however, did want to talk. He talked about the wedding and how they would have something bigger, splashier, more expensive. Nothing but the best for his Anne. She didn't even want to think about it. Suddenly, the idea of just having a small wedding on the beach appealed to her. Simple. The guys didn't even have to wear full suits. The problem was she could only see Michael as the groom. What was she doing? Who was she kidding? She was miserable. She'd have to return the ring. Maybe she'd just pack it all in and forget about the husband part entirely. It wasn't like it was uncommon for a woman to go out and order a pregnancy from the local sperm bank these days. But she didn't want to raise her child alone. She wasn't going to get what she wanted, she admonished herself. Anne smiled and automatically nodded to something George said, because he seemed to expect it. There was a commotion near the terrace. Elle motioned frantically for Noah and Max. Michael. Something had happened to Michael. Anne's breath caught in her throat at the certainty of the feeling as she froze, watching the brothers and Paget head out to the doors. Anne? George asked her, mildly annoyed that she stopped dancing in the middle of the song. She slowly let go of him and walked towards the terrace. Anne! Now he really was annoyed. She ignored him and picked up her pace. People were milling about, talking, and she pushed through them and saw the most terrifying thing. Max had his arms around Michael's torso, holding his arms while Noah held his legs. Michael was convulsing. Paget was on a cell phone. Someone suggested using a spoon to make sure he didn't swallow his tongue. Another person said that was a myth. Anne knelt before him and grabbed his hands. Michael didn't squeeze her hands back. He didn't know that she was there. She looked at Max and was frightened. He focused on Michael, speaking calmly. It's going to be okay, Michael. The ambulance is on the way. You're very strong and you'll get through this. We're all here to help you. And you have to stick around, you know, because who else is going to teach the kids to sail a boat? No one, I wouldn't know where to begin. Michael was drooling, so she used the skirt on her dress to wipe his face, even though it was difficult to do so with his jerky movements. There was red mixed with the saliva. Blood. What? Max asked, distracted. I think he bit his tongue. Her voice wavered. It seemed to take forever for the ambulance attendants to arrive. They injected something into him and asked what had happened. L spoke up, her arm around Mrs. Ramsley. I came out to talk to him, and he just started shaking. They asked all sorts of questions and finally loaded him up onto the gurney. Anne followed them, and Noah stepped up to stop her. I'll go with him. I'm his brother. No, insisted Anne. 
I'm going. You can meet me at the hospital. I know all of his information. And you're engaged to someone else, Noah said with some contempt. He doesn't need you. But in her heart of hearts, she knew he did. She also knew she wouldn't rest until she was with him again. She tore the engagement ring off her finger and threw it on the ground. Not any more. She walked around Noah and got into the ambulance. The driver closed the doors, and soon they were headed up to the hospital. Just before they made it there, Michael stopped seizing. Inside the hospital, Michael was separated from her, and she was giving admitting forms to fill out. She sat and diligently dealt with paperwork, wishing someone would tell her how Michael was. She handed back the completed forms and sat, waiting. She was still in the waiting room when Michael's family arrived. She let them know that he had stopped convulsing. Beyond that, she knew nothing more. They waited, and finally a doctor came to see them. He introduced himself as Dr. Smith. "'Special occasion?' he smiled and sat down. "'Okay, I understand all of you are concerned for Michael. Is this the first time he's ever had a seizure?' "'Yes,' Max said. "'I see by his chart that he was a patient of Dr. Hemond. He's had surgery on his brain.' Dr. Smith looked at the papers in front of him. Sometimes the brain is a funny thing. While Michael's migraines, dizziness, and hallucinations have disappeared. Hallucinations? Noah interrupted sharply. No one said anything about hallucinations. The young doctor checked his notes again. It's here on his chart. Anne put her head in her hands. Michael had never said anything. He had been suffering through so much and never said a word. When she'd been his secretary, she'd known all about the migraines and their increasing strength. However, he'd never once complained about them. She could feel Elle rub her back. As I was saying, most of Michael's previous symptoms have disappeared post-surgery. However, we all knew that there might be some side effects. Sometimes, if a stroke happens during the surgery, there can be interruptions in the neurons in the brain. They happen infrequently and randomly. With proper medications, we can work out eliminating the seizures. "'Are you saying that he had a stroke during the surgery?' Max asked. "'It's likely that he had a small one. It explains the speech aphasia and the seizures.' The doctor confirmed. "'We've sedated him, and he's going to be very tired tomorrow. We'll keep him until the day after, and if there's no other lasting effects, he'll be able to go home.' "'He's going to be okay?' Mrs. Ramsley asked, her voice quavering. "'Yes, he will be okay.' Dr. Smythe stood up. Now, seeing this is a special occasion, I'll let the entire group see him for five minutes. Then you all need to go back to the party. No one gets to stay tonight except Michael. He's going to sleep the entire time anyways. Visiting hours start at eight tomorrow. They followed the doctor and found Michael laying in a hospital bed, the hated gown on, asleep. A monitor blinked nearby, reading his vitals. Anne hung back as everyone either squeezed his hand or gave him a kiss on the cheek. Finally, most of them trailed away, and Anne came over. She perched on the bed and grabbed his hand. She clutched it to her and leaned forward to place a kiss at the edge of his mouth, then straightened to watch him sleep a moment. "'I'm sorry, Anne,' Noah said. "'I didn't know.' Anne nodded. She suspected everyone except Michael knew now. Then again, maybe he knew, but didn't want to hurt her feelings by rejecting her. She wiped away a tear and gently put Michael's hand down. Can I get a ride home? Of course. Taking a last look at Michael, she allowed Noah to lead her out of the hospital. Everyone was gathered in the parking lot with the limo. Noah explained. It seemed the most expedient. She crawled into the limo and Elle wrapped an arm around her. She leaned on her friend, feeling emotionally exhausted. Once again, she'd put Michael first. Maybe that was what she was meant to do. You're the secretary, aren't you? asked Michael's mom, eyeing her. Anne nodded. I was. He gave you all of his shares, she stated calmly. David's fit to be tied over that. I'm sorry, Anne replied. She wasn't sure what else to say. No, Rachel smiled. I think it's wonderful. Anne was puzzled. Why? Michael always was the most generous person with the people he loves. I'm looking forward to a third wedding, she said. Anne burst into tears as the rest of them got into the limo. 
Things haven't been going smoothly, Elle cautioned Mrs. Ramsley, hugging Anne. She nodded wisely. The quiet ones are always the hardest, but once you have them, they'll never let you go. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the next chapter of Words Unspoken. Also, please share this video for others to find it. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.